Welcome to another edition of On Point, Year in Review Edition Part 1. James, I'm sure we'll go over a lot of different uh, what happened in 2015 over the coming weeks as we welcome 2016. Uh, but the editorial staff has gotten the ball rolling on the Twinspires.com slash blog. Uh, top 10 performances, American Fair obviously figures prominently, a couple Breeders' Cup races. Uh, what are you going to remember most about this year? Well, definitely American Pharaoh, you know, I mean, there's no doubt. And, you know, on that list is, of course, Beholder, Specific Classic. That's a race that's always easy to remember and some other notable performances. Like, you know, going back and re-watching Shared Belief, as we mentioned last week, his Santa Anita handicap was awesome. And Flintshire and some other uh, performances during the year really stand out. Yeah, what struck me going through that list, obviously uh, American Pharaoh figuring prominently three of his races were on there and you could have made a case for maybe a couple more even, mm -hmm. but right. you know, couldn't be a whole top 10 list. But, you know, Teppin beating the boys in the Breeders' Cup, Shared Belief you mentioned, uh, Beholder beating Males in the Pacific Classic, uh, Flintshire coming over. Uh, American Pharaoh has the headlines, but, we, you know, I thought we had a really good balance of different types of action. And when Shared Belief, he retired, and we mentioned this last week, I mean, he was the number one rated horse in the world at the time, and then along came American Pharaoh, but... Uh, it really was a, a solid group, I thought, and a solid year of racing. We won't see shared belief next year. He's deceased, but Tonalist just retired. Honor Code and Liam's map we already knew retired. And that brings up a poll on Twitter that we've been asking. I'll ask you the same question, and I know you got it wrong when you actually <laughs> tried to vote. But Jockey Club Gold Cup or Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, what would you rather win? Oh, I'd much rather win the Jockey Club Gold Cup, you know. I mean, winning, they're both real big races, and winning a Breeders' Cup race, you know, would be great. But, you know, the Dirt Mile to me is, you know, they're ba that race is basically – horses could run in the sprint or the classic and it's right. sort of an in-between you're going to get the lesser of the of caliber uh, typically from those two races yeah neither really is a championship anymore but historically i mean the jockey club gold cup was the race at the end of the year and the classic mm -hmm. has supplanted that which is fine but to me the, the history and tradition and it's a mile and a quarter at belmont park just tips the scale in its favor but that it is even this close i, I had mentioned on facebook which is where the conversation started i thought it'd be a landslide for the jockey club gold cup to me that it's this close though speaks to the strength of the breeders cup brand some races they've added went over like a lead balloon but i mean yeah this one it's caught on and matt you know and i think a, a big part of that it, currently is the fact that you know zayad did keep american pharaoh in training he could have retired him after the belmont but having him run in this year's breeders cup classic i think gave mm -hmm. the whole event That's a, great point. A, a boost and you know it was great for the sport so all right well that we'll agree on we're not going to get too much into it now running short on time we'll tease what we'll certainly talk about during an on point next week one thing we don't agree on is outstanding jockey for the eclipse award i'm going triple crown straight ticket in the horseman groups i know you're going with javier give us a little taste of what well, Thanks Javier, you know, last that. week was the opening weekend of the uh, championship meet at Gulfstream. Javier won four of the uh, claiming crown starter stakes. Now, we don't actually think the claiming crown is No, really but it, it's interesting because that helped boost his earnings. He set an all-time record two years ago, $26.2 million in earnings. Now he's at twenty-seven and a half. So it'll be interesting to see it before the end of the year if he can get the $28 million. It's one of the best years ever, you know, at least in modern times by a jockey. And, uh, um, yeah, you know, he's going to get my yeah. vote. Well, we'll dig more into the stats. The one thing I'll say to the earnings thing that will hurt him in that regard, I think, is that he's breaking his own record. Yeah. I think if there was a name you threw out there like Johnny V or Jerry Bailey, although that was a long time ago and money's certainly changed since then, it would seem more impressive. But when you're just besting your own performance, people might not think it's as special as it is. But it is. I mean, it's truly a great accomplishment. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, like you said, we'll get into that. And we, there's part, there'll be a couple of equine categories we disagree on Absolutely. as well. So it should right. be a good debate. Yeah, no doubt. And we'll get into it on social media on the blog as well. But join us for On Point for more of that discussion next week. We'll talk to you then.